Welcome to reInventors Roundtable. And this week's roundtable on reinventing what we're calling the collaborative economy. How fast could America and the world really make the changes that would actually stem the rise of global temperatures and avoid these bad scenarios of climate change. One of the real cores of this problem is how can we get into the really the fundamental nature of the economic system itself, one that's premised on continually high growth and the never ending essentially production and consumption of more and more things. I finally got around to reading the um, four degree report put out by the, the World Bank. We can't survive a plus seven degrees Fahrenheit as a global population. When we talk about plus seven degrees global average temperature increase, it's plus 11 degrees over land, which is where I live and where all of us live. So it's even more grotesque. So this is where my incredible urgency comes from, that there really is no time. There really is no time. So I'm delivering this climate message right now because I want to flip back to this idea of Peers Incorporated. This organizational structure is delivering all the things that we need to have right now, which is we need to figure out platforms for participation, where we can get economies of scale so we can do it very cost effectively, we can use resources really effectively to address all these different major, major problems we have and we can really do them quickly because it's all of us together. The issue is not just kind of average change of global warming that is a, a seven degree or four degree or two degree rise. A two degree would be in centigrade is a bad rise. Four degree is catastrophic and six degree is calamitous. But it's the fact that it's uneven and uh, how it actually happens. It doesn't happen in a kind of nice, smooth way over the whole world. What actually happens is more extreme weather, more disruptions in more places, more often, more frequently. We didn't figure out how to tackle the population problem by imposing restrictions on, on birth rates. But the way we are, are solving it is, uh, is through women, women's empowerment. And so it's a positive idea, an empowering idea that, that has led to the result of getting control of the population crisis, or at least we're on, on the right path. So this um, Peers Inc. has the potential of being that positive, empowering idea. I want to jump in a bit on the, on some of the cultural factors here. Why are people so set into consuming the way they already are? What biologists tell us is that about 150 million years ago, at a period of kind of great migration from Africa, um, humans developed this sort of dopamine D4 receptor, which was the, the thing that made us kind of excited about finding the next new thing. It was actually really critical for evolution, for humanity to move towards the next new thing. We're beset not by the challenges in, in, in much of the industrialized economy of how to deal with too little, but instead, how do we deal with the consequences of having too much? Um, and this is something that humanity isn't really culturally prepared for. The consumer society that we have right now is a construct deliberately developed during the 40s, 50s and 60s by a concerted, focused effort of government and the private sector. If that is indeed embedded in my DNA, that I can shift that desire for the next thing from physical things to experiences yeah if i understand you robin you are seeing a hope in this peer-to-peer -peer economy as an avenue for changing our value system i don't think we just have to rely on value change i think economics is in our favor what i'm hoping for is a lot of the big old dogs who've been in this space providing products and services in the, in, in the historical pattern will embrace uh, collaborative consumption, peer sharing, um, uh, resource utilization in a way that takes what they've learned through sustainability to a whole new level. My fear is that we're still locked in a let's do things less badly kind of modality as opposed to what I like to call a regenerative economy and really looking to natural systems as a model. Without saying it explicitly, Robin, you're you're describing an ecological worldview or a living systems worldview. And that's a very different worldview than the mechanistic worldview that the current economic system operates in. I see signs of, of shift. And I hope that this peer-to-peer -peer economy, this is not a solution to everything, but it's one of the forces that may actually facilitate 
this transition. Peers Incorporated is about this idea of who holds the power and where, in fact, we go for value. I do want to close with this idea of maintaining the sense of urgency and, oh my God, it is right around the corner, so each one of us has to be really actively and proactively talking to get this change to happen.